guys. It's Jody with Real Life Canine. I want to talk a little bit about e-collar training today. So a lot of people are, are getting all confused and all wound up and I hear the big responses all the time about e-collar training. About how negative it is, how people think it hurts their dogs. So I want to go over some of that on how we do things. Now this is not the way every trainer does things. There again, every trainer you talk to is going to have different ways of doing things on, on collars. I'm well aware there are people out there, owners and trainers, that abuse equipment every day. But what I want to show you is there's a better way. And I want to show you a way that the dog can be taught the collar. He can be taught what it means. He can be taught how to turn it off. He can be taught how to control his own environment without hurting the dog. So I got the biggest personality in the house, and yes, the collar fits him. I just haven't cut the excess off. Actually, his collar just got here, um, his personal one, that'll go home with him, and I haven't set it up yet. I've already set the collar. Yes, I will be using the shock feature on the collar. Uh, very rarely will I use vibrate on a collar. It's just something I don't do for, I do for certain specific stuff. Um, what we're doing is ultra low level training. So what I mean by that is this is set to where he barely feels it. So here's kind of the way I explain it to my customers. Imagine standing in the grocery store and you see the little three-year-old that wants a piece of bubble gum or a piece of candy. And they're like, mama, 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 mama. Well, that's the kind of feel I want for this dog. Annoying. I want him to want to make it go away. Not painful. I'm not training him through pain. I'm teaching him on multiple different ways how to turn this off. And right now we begin it with every dog. I begin it on the recall. I begin it on leash. I begin it with treats. I begin it with a lot of praise and a lot of happy-go-lucky stuff because I don't, I'm not hurting the dog. Watch the dog. Through this video, the one thing I want you to do is pay attention to the dog. I want you to see what he shows you. Does he show you hurt? Does he show you any bad emotion? <clears throat> what he shows you is a dog that's ready to perform. This is how I train this. I'll go over all the steps another day. Right now, I just want you to see probably 75% of the recalls we're about to do, we'll do 10 or 12. Um, at least 75% of them probably have some form of shock involved in them. That way he's getting out to the end of the line. Basically, I'm introducing a pressure that he relieves by coming to me. When he does this, this will reinstill or, or higher, add higher value to that recall command. So here's how it looks. Chip, here. Yes. Good boy. <clears throat> Come on, buddy. Free. Good boy. a little coordination to do all this too. Chip, here! Yes. Good boy. Good job. Chip, <clears throat> Yes. You hear a couple other dogs barking in the background. Those are just some of my personal dogs that are behind the fence. So they're distracting him a little bit. I'm not asking him to work in a highly controlled environment. I'm asking him to work wherever we are. Chip, here. Yes. 
Is his recall perfect in front of me looking at me? No. Do I care? No. Not right now. Chip, here. Yes. Boy. Three dog, buddy. And I'm going to stop him right there. So you can see on film, this is a four pound toy poodle. Somewhere between four and five pounds. I can't remember exactly what his mom said he weighs. Um, he's one of the smallest dogs I've done. I have done another dog just like him. If you remember and scroll back through my videos, you'll see Nutter Butter. Nutter Butter was the same little guy, but in brown. <clears throat> same attitude, excellent little dogs. But what I want you to see overall in this video is e-collar training is not painful. It's not damaging the dog. I'm not putting the collar at a high level and shocking the dog through it to teach him. I'm working on something he already knows and now I'm just layering the e-collar over it. So why am I doing it if I've already taught the command? Well, every command is only as strong as the reinforcement you've done. So what if this dog gets out in front of a car or gets out in a neighborhood where he lives and a, a puppy across the street or a squirrel or a cat or the neighbors across the streets calling the dog and they don't see the car coming. His owner deserves and he deserves to have a recall that will stop him and have him be obedient. Like I've said before, this is the most humane, safe, and effective tool on the market for teaching dogs. Nothing else out there that's any better, if it's used correctly. Keep watching me. I'll do some more videos. Um, like I said, the hand-eye coordination, trying to keep it on video, trying to stay out of the way of the video, keep the dog looking like they're, they're doing what they're supposed to do. All that's kind of complicated, and I'm doing it today without a helper, so I'm actually managing the camera myself also. So keep watching. I will produce more videos showing you the how-tos, what I'm doing with the e-collar. I'm using about four different methods with the e-collar all at one time. I'm actually teaching this dog the day that I teach it to him. I'm also teaching him to not rely on the collar. So what you just saw is day one with Chip on e-collar. This is his first time ever feeling that e-collar. So it's not like he's used to it. And I'll show you just so you can see on camera. Here's his setting is a seven out of a hundred. <coughs> So he's not being shocked at a high level. Most people can't even feel that seven. Uh, very, very few. Most people feel this collar at about 13 to 15, somewhere in that neighborhood. I feel it at about 16 or 17, right on the tender part of my arm. He feels it. That's all I want him to feel. I don't want him to feel I shouldn't see a big jump, a big reaction from it. So I go through and I set that level for the dog with him out just roaming around the yard. <clears throat> so this way I know his working level. His working level right now is a seven. As we progress through this week, uh, today is Monday, so as we progress through the week, he'll probably wind up five or six, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, he may stay at a seven. If he stays at a seven, that's fine. What I want to see is the dog respond without a big reaction. I don't want to see the ear flickers. I don't want to see the head turn. I don't want to see him jerk. I certainly don't want to hear him holler. There's none of that's what this is about. This is not about putting pain on the dog. This is just a little tap that's telling the dog, if you want this to go away, come to me. Then we can layer in all the other commands later. But I'm not trying to confuse him by adding six different commands right now. I want him to learn one command with the e-collar. He knows how to turn the collar off. He knows what it does. He knows what it feels like. Then we'll layer in all the other stuff. So keep watching us. Again, this is Jody at Real Life Canine. We will be on YouTube. Uh, actually, this video will be on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. And I'm trying to get my Twitter back going again, guys. It's just something I quit doing for a while. I will get it back going pretty soon, so you can follow us there also. I appreciate your support. Please feel free to share the video. If you're going to comment on the video, please be sure you have watched the whole thing. <clears throat> yes, my timing was probably off on some things, some markers and rewards. That's not what this is about today. This is about showing the, the benefit of the collar and how the collar does on the dog. Because so many people think when I say e-collar or shock collar, and I don't shy away from the word shock collar, they think we're hurting a dog. Does this dog look hurt to you? Go back and play it again. Go watch it again. At any point in this video, did you see this dog look like he was hurt? Keep following us. I appreciate your support and your referrals. Business has been good. And my family appreciates it. So continue doing that, please, for us. We thank you.